video I'm going to be talking about the sine, cosine and tangent graphs. We will have a look at where they come from and the key points on those graphs and then we will look at how they can actually be used to find other angles. But for now let's start with the sine graph. So if I draw on these axes a line that is has a length of 1 at an angle of 30 degrees. If we make that into a right angle triangle by joining it down to the axes, we could measure the length of this opposite side here and it would be 0 0.5. Why have I done that? You should know that sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. If you aren't familiar with that or you don't understand that, have a look at my previous video on basic trigonometry, but that is the definition of sine. Sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So in this right angle triangle, 0 0.5 is our opposite and our hypotenuse is actually 1. Our hypotenuse is the long side opposite the right angle. So sine of 30 is equal to 0 0.5. So we could plot that on the graph. If you look at my graph down here, 30 degrees is that point. If I make my axes go up to 1, 0 0.5 is going to be halfway up, so 30 degrees, 0 0.5 is going to be a point here. We could have actually also have got that from our table of sines, because if you look here, the angle being 30 degrees tells us that the sine of the angle is 0 0.5. If I draw another line then, that is one long, but this time is at 60 degrees. Again, I can draw a vertical line down to join it to the horizontal. And if we measured that length, it is 0 0.866, or if we worked it out using trigonometry from our calculator, or indeed if we looked in the table to get it. So what that tells us is that sine 60 is equal to 0 0.866. So on our graph, 60 degrees, we go up to 0 0.866, which is going to be roughly here. If I now draw a line that is one long at approximately 89 degrees, Again, we could draw a straight line down and make a right angle triangle, and we could measure our length, look it up in the table, or work it out using trigonometry, and that will actually be just a little bit shorter than 1. If we move the line round to 90 degrees, the opposite, although it's no longer a right angle triangle, it is the same length as the hypotenuse, so it would be up to 1. So at 30 degrees, we're at 0 0.5. 60 degrees we're at 0.866 and at 90 degrees we're at 1. We could actually continue this pattern on beyond 90 degrees by drawing a line out this way at say 120 degrees, make the line one long and measure the opposite which is now the vertical line down here. And that again, that is 30 degrees beyond, so this angle is actually 60 degrees now, so that would be the same as the 60 degrees angle, which was 0.866. So we'd have another point here at 120 degrees. So let's have a quick look at what happens if we continue the full way around the circle. So let's have a look what happens if we start at zero degrees and slowly increase our angle. So we've got a line that is one long and at zero degrees, our opposite is actually non-existent. So is also zero. So on our graph, we have a point at zero, zero. As we increase our degree, the length of the red line, the opposite line, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And remember, this is equal to the sine of the angle because the hypotenuse is 1. So the opposite divided by 1 is just the opposite. So the length of the opposite in this case gives us the sine of the angle. And if we think about what we've just looked at, the sine of 30 degrees was 0 0.5. And the point we're currently at is sine of 30 and 0 0.5. So as we keep going round, our, our opposite is getting bigger and bigger and bigger until we get to 90 degrees, where it is the same length of, as our hypotenuse, which is 1. If we carry beyond 90 degrees, the opposite length is still positive, but it is getting shorter and shorter and shorter, until we get down to 180, where it is now non-existent again, so back to zero. If we carry on beyond 180, our opposite is now negative. It is below the y-axis, if you like, so it is a negative length, and it is getting more and more and more negative until we get round to 270, where it is minus 1 in length now. And then continue round back to 
360 degrees, which is where we started, so we are back to zero. If we were to carry on above 360 degrees, it is just the same as repeating the whole cycle again. So 90 degrees is actually the same as 450. So hopefully you can see that as we continue round, this graph is just going to keep repeating. So this is what a sine graph looks like and it will just keep repeating and you could actually do negative angles as well and it would keep repeating to the left of the axes as well. So the important features of a sine graph are that it starts at zero, zero, and it is a nice smooth wave that goes up to one and down to minus one. They are its maximum and minimum values. It is a smooth curve between it and you will do a hump between zero, it will reach its maximum at 90 and go back down at 180 to zero. And then you've got a trough between 180 and 360 with the minimum being at 270. So it is nice and symmetrical and it is easy to see the key points at every 90 degrees. Once you've done 360, it will just repeat itself again. So now let's have a look at a cos graph. So for a cosine graph, we can do exactly the same thing and we could draw a line that has a length of one, which will be our hypotenuse. And if we made the angle 30 degrees, say, we could make it into a right angled triangle. But this time, because cos of an angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, in this case, it is this horizontal length which is our adjacent. And because our hypotenuse is one, adjacent divided by one is just equal to the adjacent. So the length of this line will actually give us our value for the cos of the angle. If we measured that then, or looked it up in the table, cos of 30 is 0.866. So that line would be 0.866 in length if our hypotenuse is one. If we make that one, and that 0.5, we can plot a point at 30 degrees and 0.866, which will be somewhere around there. Continue on to 60 degrees. And this time our adjacent is much shorter. And if our hypotenuse was one long, cos of 60 is 0.5. So we could work it out from the table, from our calculator or by measuring, but that length would be 0.5. So at 60 degrees, we are at 0.5. If we go around to 90 degrees, it's going to be a straight line up. So our horizontal line would be non-existent, which means it would be zero. So at 90 degrees, we are at zero. If we continue around to 120 degrees, again, making our line one long, this time the length of the adjacent is actually negative because it is on the negative side of the x-axis. So that would have a length of 0.5. So cos of that angle would actually be minus 0.5. So at 120 degrees, we are at minus 0.5 down here. So again, let's have a look at the whole graph when we cover every single angle. So this time, instead of recording the length of the vertical line, we are recording the length of the horizontal line. So when we are at zero degrees, the horizontal line is actually the same as our hypotenuse, which is one long. So we are starting up at one when we are at zero degrees. As we move round, our horizontal line is getting shorter and shorter and shorter until we get round to 90 degrees where it is non-existent, so zero. Beyond 90 degrees, it is negative. It is on the negative side of the x-axis, so our line is getting longer but more negative until we get round to 180 degrees where it is minus one and then it will get shorter again until 270 where our horizontal line is now non-existent, so zero, and then back round to 360 where it is now one long again. And again, if we continue on beyond 360, it's as if we're doing the exact same thing again. So our graph will just keep repeating this pattern. And you may have noticed that this is very similar to the sine graph. The only difference is where it starts. So this graph still has maximum points of one, minimum points of minus one, and the important points are every 90 degrees. But instead of starting at zero, where our sine graph started, 
our cosine graph starts up at 1 and starts by going down and then coming back up to 1 at 360 degrees. So here are our two graphs and they look very, very similar, but they start at different points. So hopefully you can look at those and know which one is which. The sine was the one that started at 0, so this top graph is our sine graph, which means that if the x-axis or horizontal axis is actually our angle, then the vertical axis is the sine of the angle. The bottom graph then is our cos graph because it is starting at 1. The key points to remember are that they both go up to 1 and down to minus 1. The cycles repeat every 360 degrees and the important points are every 90 degrees. So we're at 0, then our maximum peak is at 90. It goes back down to 0 at 180. Then our minimum point minus 1 is at 270 and we get back to 0 at 360. Likewise, our cos graph starts at 1 at 0, gets down to 0 at 90 degrees, then its minimum point minus 1 is at 180, gets back to 0 at 270, and it gets back up to its peak at 1 at 360. So hopefully you understand these graphs, where they come from, and the fact that they would keep on going forever and ever and ever in both directions. And you could be able to sketch either one of these graphs if asked to do so. A tan graph looks very different to these two graphs. If we think about what tan is, you should know that the tan of the angle is the opposite over the adjacent. So in our right angle triangle, the opposite and the adjacent are these two if we are talking about this angle here. And if we made our hypotenuse equal to 1 that we have when discovering the sine graph and the cosine graph. The opposite was given to us by the sine graph. The adjacent is given to us by the cos graph. So tan is actually the sine graph, the value on the sine graph divided by the value on the cos graph. So if we think about that at important points, at zero degrees, sine is zero, cos is one. Zero divided by one is zero. So our tan graph would be at zero, zero. If we move along to 90 degrees, we have sine is 1 and cos is 0. 1 divided by 0 is a mathematical impossibility. It is infinity if you like to think of it that way, but it cannot ever actually be reached. So hopefully you know that you know a little bit about graphs and you understand the meaning of an asymptote, but we actually have an asymptote at 90 degrees. Because you cannot divide by zero, tan of the angle, when, which is opposite over adjacent, when the adjacent is zero long, you cannot divide by zero. So what would happen between those two points? At the beginning of the graph where we are close to zero, we are dividing by cos, which is almost one. So our graph begins by following closely the sine graph. But as cos gets smaller and smaller and smaller and approaches zero, the answer will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And when cos is almost zero, the answer will be very, very big indeed. So our graph will look something like this, approaching that asymptote line. Cos reaches zero again here at 270. So we will have another asymptote at 270. So let's think about what happens between these two asymptotes. So just after our 90 degrees, our cos is very, very small again, but negative, and our sine is still positive. So a positive divided by a negative is negative, but we are dividing by a very small negative number. So it will be a very large negative number. Our sine is getting smaller, and our cos is getting bigger. So we are dividing a small sine by a big cos, but cos is still negative, so it will be still negative, but approaching zero. We are then dividing a negative by a negative, which is positive. So it will look something like that. For the last portion of the tan graph between 270 and 360, we now have a negative sine divided by a positive cosine. So the answer will be negative again, and it will follow a similar pattern to the one it followed before. So you will see that there is repetition in the tan graph, but it is a very, very different shape, and you actually have these asymptotes. If you try and type into your calculator 
Tan 90, it will say something like syntax error or mathematical error because it is a mathematical impossibility. This graph will keep repeating, so it does actually look like this and it will repeat in both directions forever and ever and ever. So it actually repeats every 180 degrees. So that gap there is only 180 and then you'll get the same pattern the next 180. Now, the tan graph is a little bit more complicated to understand, so don't worry too much if you don't understand completely where that came from. Have a play around with it yourself. Draw some right angle triangles and measure the opposite and adjacent and do the calculation. Or have a look in the tan tables and try plotting it. But for now, we are going to move on and see how we can use the sine, cosine and tan graphs to solve some problems. Now, let's have a think about what happened when we had the sine of our angle equaling 0.5, which meant that because the sine of the angle is the opposite over hypotenuse, that meant that the opposite over the hypotenuse was 0.5. And because we drew our hypotenuse one long, that just meant that our opposite was equal to 0.5. Now, if you think about that in terms of our cycle, when we got round to 30 degrees, our opposite was 0.5 long. But actually, when we got round to 150 degrees, our opposite was also 0.5 long. So there are actually two angles that would answer this question. If you were trying to find the angle where the sine of the angle was 0.5, on your calculator, you inverse sign it and you do inverse sine 0.5 and your calculator will give you the answer of 30 degrees. Your calculator can only give you one answer but we know from our diagram and from this diagram that there are actually two possible answers. There is 30 degrees and there is 150 degrees. So it is important to consider that you might not be looking for the angle that is 30 degrees. In some circumstances, you might be looking for the angle that is 150 degrees. Now, in terms of a right angle triangle, you can't have the angle being 150 degrees because you can't have a 90 degrees angle and a 150 degrees in a triangle. But in terms of other trigonometric problems, when we move on to talking about scaling triangles, or other things like that, you might actually be looking for the 150 degrees. So you need to be able to find what the other angle would be based on the angle that your calculator gives you. Now, if you look at the symmetry of our diagram, for our opposite to be 0.5 long over here, it must be the same triangle, which means that this angle must be 30 degrees. That means that we know the remainder of this angle, because it's on a straight line, must be equal to 180 minus 30 degrees. So our other angle is going to be 150 degrees. And that will always work with sine because of the symmetry of how our diagram is working. You can always find the second angle by doing 180 degrees, take away the angle that your calculator gives you. Now, in terms of the answer that your calculator will give you, it gives you the answer between this region here, between minus 90 and 90 degrees. So this portion of the graph. So if you typed into your calculator sine minus one of minus 0.5, minus 0.5 is down here. Your calculator would give you this angle, which is minus 30, where actually you would be more likely to be interested in this positive angle over here, or even this positive angle over here. So let's have a look at how we can actually find those two angles and how we could solve it. Now, if you were asked to find all the angles that satisfy the equation sine theta equals 0.8, or you use your calculator to find the one angle and wanted to find the other angle, let's look at how we could do that. So to start with, we need to get rid of the sine to get the theta on its own by doing the inverse sine, and we do the inverse sine of 0.8 which your calculator will tell you is 53.1 degrees. Now, if our first angle is 53.1, we can have a look on our diagram and go along 
and form the symmetry of our diagram. If this is 53.1 here, this must be 53.1 here, which means we are going 53 back from 180. So our second angle is going to be 180 minus our angle, which is 180 minus 53.1, which is... 126.9 degrees. So that's following the same rule we talked about a minute ago from the symmetry of our other diagram, which is that you can always find the second angle by doing 180 degrees take away your first angle. So for this second question, we start it in the same way. Theta is sine minus 1 of minus 0 0.7, and that will give you minus 44.4 degrees. Minus 44.4 degrees is obviously out of our range of 0 and 360 degrees. But we can still do the same thing and do 180 minus that angle, which is 180 take away minus 44.4 degrees. Taking away a negative is the same as adding, so that is equal to 224.4 degrees. Now you have got two angles now but you might not be interested in a negative angle. And if we think about what that means on our diagram, at minus 0.7 we are here. We have been given this angle as minus 44.4. We have now found this angle, which is at 224.4, but we might actually need this angle. So Remember, a sine graph repeats every 360 degrees. So once you've got your two angles within a cycle, you can just add or subtract 360 degrees to move to a different cycle and a different part on the graph. So in this case, I want to move to the positive part of the graph, so I'm just going to add 360 degrees, which will give me 315.6 degrees. So this angle here is actually 315.6 degrees. So there are always, with a sign or cos, two angles within 360 degree cycle that fit your sine ratio. Your calculator will give you one of the angles, and to get the second one, you take that angle away from 180. If your angles are then not in the right part of the graph, you can just move 360 degrees along the graph to get it where you want it to be. Let's have a look at an example for cosine then. So if we have cos theta equals 0.5, we work out our first angle on our calculator by doing inverse cos of 0.5. Now that will give you 60 degrees. And if we think about that in terms of our graph, that is this angle here. So if we carried along the graph, there would be another answer here which we can actually directly see, but if we think about why that is 300 degrees, we know that this gap here is equal to 60, so this gap here is also equal to 60. So in this case, we can do 360, take away our angle, which in this case was 60 degrees, leaving us with 300. So this time, because our graph is symmetrical to 360 degrees, we do 360 take away our first angle. So let's have a look at the second question and see if that holds. So we get the first angle from our calculator by doing inverse cos of minus 0 0.75, which is 139 degrees. So in this case, your calculator only ever gives you a positive answer because it will give you the answer on this portion of the graph, which makes life a little bit easier. So at minus 0 0.75, we are down here, and this is the answer our calculator has given us, which is 139. Now, if we continue along, our second answer will be here, and because that gap there is 139, we know that from here to 360 will also be 139 because of the symmetry. So for our second angle again, we can do 360 take away our first angle, which in this case was 139. So that will give us an answer of 221 degrees. So this second angle here was at 221. So for sine to get the second angle, we did 180 degrees take away our first angle because it is 360 degrees, take away our first angle. Let's have a look at tan then. 
So the process is exactly the same in that we find our first angle by using our calculator by typing in tan minus 1 of 1 and that will give us our first angle of 45 degrees. So if we think about that on our graph, our first angle here is at 45 degrees, but we know that with any trigonometric function there are two angles within 360 that match. So this angle here can be found just by moving along by 180 degrees. Remember these graphs repeat, these lines repeat every 180 degrees, so to get into the next part, you just add 180 degrees. Equally, if you wanted to go backwards, you could go backwards 180 degrees. So the rule for tan is that you take your first angle and just add on 180 degrees. And in this case, that will be 225 degrees. In terms of the answer your calculator will give you, it will give you the answer from this portion of the graph. So you might get a negative answer out, but again, you can just move along 180 degrees to get your second angle. So let's have a look at tan theta equals minus 1.5. Again, we use our calculator to get the first answer by doing tan minus 1 of minus 1.5, which your calculator will tell you is minus 56.3 degrees. Now we can use our rule and add 180 degrees on and in this case, minus 56.3 add 180 is equal to 123.7 degrees. So here are our two angles, but remember if you are not in the right portion of the graph, you can always add 360 degrees onto the angle to move it into the next cycle. So in this case, I don't want a negative angle, so I'm going to add 360 to move it into the positive part of the graph and that is 303.7 degrees. So again, there are two angles within a 360 degree cycle for every tangent. So just to recap our general rules, for sine, if you find your first angle using your calculator, you find your second angle by doing 180, take away that answer. For cos, you do 360, take away that answer. And for tan, you can either add or take away 180 degrees, but you will normally be adding it to move into the positive part of the graph. And remember, for any of these, if your angle is not in the right part of the graph, mostly if it is negative, you can move it into the positive part of the graph by just moving into the next cycle by adding 360 degrees. So pause the video and have a go at answering these questions. So for question one, you need to find your first angle by doing sine minus 1 or inverse sine of minus 0.6, which from your calculator, you should get minus 36.9 degrees. Now, to find your second angle, you do 180 take away your first angle. 180 take away minus 36.9 is the same as adding, so that would be 216.9 degrees. So I have my two angles, but they are not both between 0 and 360, so I need to move this angle into the positive part of the graph, which I can just do by adding 360 degrees, which gives me 323.1 degrees. So there are my two angles between 0 and 360. Question 2, this time we need to use inverse cos to get our first answer. Type that into your calculator and you will get 63.3 degrees. For cos, our second answer is gained by doing 360 degrees take our first answer. 360 take away 63.3 is 296.7 degrees. This time they are both between 0 and 360 degrees, so they are my two angles. Tan theta is not minus 0.3, so the first thing we need to do is type into our calculator tan minus 1 or inverse tan of minus 0.3, and that will give us our first answer of minus 16.7 degrees. Our second answer is achieved by adding 180 degrees to that which is 163.3 degrees. So we found our two angles, but they are not both between 0 and 360. So I'm going to move this angle into the right portion of the graph by adding 360 degrees to move it into the next cycle. 
So that would give us 343.3 degrees. So our two answers are 163.3 and 343.3 degrees. So those, these general rules are something that you need to remember. If you are particularly bad at remembering things or you don't quite understand the graphs, there is another way called the four quadrants of remembering these things. So if we look at each quadrant individually, the first quadrant is the top right hand corner because that is where, if you think about a normal Cartesian axis with X and Y, that is where both are positive. If you think about spinning a line round like we did earlier, the second quadrant it reached was this one here, then it went into this quadrant, and then it went into this quadrant. So if we look at our first quadrant to begin with, and make this into a right angle triangle, our opposite is positive and our adjacent is also positive. This means that sine, which is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, is going to be positive. So sine theta in this quadrant is positive. So if we then consider the cosine of an angle, which is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, again, the adjacent and the hypotenuse are both positive. So in this quadrant, the cosine of the angle is also positive. The tan of the angle is equal to the opposite over adjacent, and again, because both are positive, the tan of the angle is positive. So in this quadrant, all of sine, cos, and tan are positive. In the second quadrant, the opposite again is positive, but the adjacent this time is negative. So when we do the opposite over the hypotenuse, the opposite is positive. The hypotenuse in all of these quadrants is considered to be positive. So the sine of the angle is positive. Cos, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, would be negative then because the adjacent is negative. And tan, which is the opposite over the adjacent and negative over positive, so is negative. So in this quadrant, only the sine is positive. In the third quadrant, the opposite is negative and the adjacent is negative as well. So in this case, the sine of the angle is negative because the negative opposite. The cos of the angle is negative because of the negative adjacent. And the tan of the angle this time is positive because opposite over adjacent and negative over a negative is a positive. So in this quadrant, only the tan is positive. In our fourth quadrant, this time the opposite is negative, but the adjacent is positive. So the sign this time is negative because of the negative opposite. The cos is positive because of the positive adjacent. And the tan is negative because you've got the opposite over the adjacent, so negative over a positive. So in this quadrant, it is only the cosine that is positive. We will look at why this is useful in a minute. But the important thing for now is that all of them are positive in the first one. Only the sine in the second quadrant, only the tan in the third, and only the cos in the fourth. So if we look at the first letter of each of those, A, S, T, C. And if you can remember that, and there are a few acronyms to help you remember it, one of them is add sugar to coffee, all silver teacups, all students take calculus. There are quite a few of them, but if you can remember that, then it will help you to find the second angle. Let's have a look at how. If we look at our first question, which is sine theta equals 0.4, this is positive. This means that our two angles are going to be in the all quadrant where all of them are positive and in our second quadrant where just the sine is positive. So if we find our first angle by typing in sine minus 1 of 0.4 that will give us an angle of 23.6 degrees. So we know that this angle here is 23.6. Now this method works by looking at the symmetry and saying well this angle here then is 23.6. So we can work out our total angle, which is the big angle in here, 
by doing 180 take away 23.6. So the same rule that we used before, but it's a way of remembering which rule it's going to be. So that would give us 156.4 degrees. So from this diagram, we have our two angles. Our second example then is cos of the angle. And again, it is positive. So this time we are in our first quadrant where all of them are positive and in our fourth quadrant where the cos is positive because of the C. So if we find our first angle by doing inverse cos of 0.3, which gives us an angle of 72.5, we know that on this diagram, this angle here is 72.5, which means that this angle here from symmetry is also 72.5. So we can find our big complete angle by doing 360 take away 72.5 which is 287.5 degrees. So again, we have our two angles, 72.5 and 287.5. Number three is tan, and again is positive. So our first angle will be in the first quadrant where all of them are positive, and our second angle will be in our third quadrant where only tan is positive. So if we find our first angle by doing inverse tan of 1.5, our calculator tells us that the first angle is 56.3 degrees. So this angle is 56.3 degrees. So from the symmetry of our diagram, this angle here must also be 56.3 degrees. So we can see to find our total angle, we need to do 180 plus 56.3, which is 236.3 degrees, again, giving us our two angles. So these three rules are the exact same rules that we've already looked at, but it is a way of remembering it. If you don't understand or you don't like the graphs or you have particularly bad memory, if you can remember an acro acronym for all silver teacups, all students take calculus, something like that, then you can use this method instead. Let's have a look then at the negative examples. So the number one B, this time we've got sine theta being negative which means it is going to be in the third and fourth quadrants where sine is not positive. So if we use our calculator to find our first angle, minus 0.7, that will give us an answer of minus 44.4 degrees. So that tells us that this angle here is 44.4 degrees. So by symmetry, this angle here is 44.4 degrees. So in this case, we can find this angle by doing 180 plus 44.4 degrees, which is the same as doing 180 minus our negative 44.4 degrees. So that gives us 224.4 degrees. And it also tells us that this angle here, the minus 44.4, is equivalent to doing 360 degrees minus 44.4, which is 315.6 degrees. So that comes from that angle there. A negative cosine is going to be in the second quadrant where only sine is positive and the third quadrant where only tan is positive. So you get the first angle from your calculator by doing inverse cos of minus 0.75 and that will give you an angle of 138.6 degrees which means that this angle here because it is an angle bigger than 90 degrees is 138.6 degrees which by symmetry means that this angle here is 138.6 degrees so we can find our second angle by doing 360 take away our 138.6, which is 221.4 degrees. So again, we have found our two angles. For a negative tan, our angles are going to be in the second quadrant where only sine is positive and our fourth quadrant where only cos is positive. So get the first angle out your calculator by doing tan minus 1 of minus 0.5 which is minus 26.6 degrees. So that tells us that this angle here, because it's a smaller angle, less than 90, is 26.6 degrees. And therefore, this angle here 
is 26.6 degrees. We are always looking at the angle with the horizontal, not with the vertical line. So from this, we can get our two angles. This angle by doing 180 take away 26.6, which is 153.4 degrees. And this second angle here by doing 360 take away 26.6 which is 333.4 degrees again these rules are very similar to what we were using before and you can use the same rules but it is another way of getting to the angles so pause the video and have a go at answering these questions so for the first question our angles our sign is positive so our angles are going to be in the first and second quadrant for our first angle, we are going to type it in our calculator as sine minus 1 of 0.40, and that will give us our answer, which is 24.8. So on our diagram, this angle here is 24.8, so that angle there is 24.8. So our second angle is 180 minus 24.8, which is 155.2 degrees. For 1b, our sign is negative this time, which means that it's going to be in the third and fourth quadrant. So from our calculator, we can find our first angle by doing sine minus 1 or inverse sine of minus 0 0.85, which is minus 58.2 degrees. So that tells me that this angle here and this angle here are both equal to 58.2. So we can find our first angle by doing 180 plus 58.2 which is 238.2 and our second angle by doing 360 take away 58.2 which is 301.8 degrees. For question 2a we have a positive cos which means that our angles are going to be in the first and fourth quadrant. So find the first angle by typing into your calculator cos minus 1 0.37 which is 68.3 degrees. So that tells us that this angle here and this angle here are both equal to 68.3. So our second angle is going to be equal to 360 take away 68.3, which is 291.7 degrees. When we have a negative cos, our angles are going to be in the second and third quadrant. So from your calculator, the first answer is going to be equal to 106.9 degrees, which means that this angle here and this angle here are both equal to 106.9. So our second angle can be found by doing 360 take away 106.9, which is 253.1 degrees. For tan, a positive tan is going to give us angles in the first and third quadrant. So when we find our first angle on our calculator, we do tan minus 1 of 2, and that will give us 63.4 degrees, which tells us that this angle and this angle are both 63.4. So our second angle can be found by adding 180, which is 243.4 degrees. For a negative tan, our angles are going to be in the second and fourth quadrant. So our first angle can be found using our calculator by doing inverse tan of minus 2.2 which is minus 65.6 degrees. So that tells us that this angle and this angle are both 65.6 degrees. So our first angle can be found by doing 180 take away 65.6 which is 114.4 degrees and our second angle can be found by doing 360 take away 65.6 which is 294.4 degrees. So I hope you now understand what the trigonometric so sine, cosine and tangent graphs look like and their key features, how you can use them to find the angles that your calculator won't give you or how you can use the quadrant method to find those angles that your calculator doesn't give you. So good job and I will see you again soon.